topic I wanted to bring up. Oh, Shire Singer's still on AEO. All right. Anyways, the topic I wanted to bring up is everyone that's listening. I know some people left. Here, these are targets for AEO if you're still in it. Actually, this looks really good. It's it's so weak, it's like not even barely moving, which is good. Um, and I'm not saying this gets to 16 at all, but I'm saying 16 would be a dream target. And quite frankly, any number with a 16 in front of it would be a good day here. So anyways, let's talk about the topic. Whether you're day trading or doing options, which everyone here is day trading, I think. I think some of you, though, are here and you're not doing all the day trades, which is fine. You know, some of you don't want to do the market when we do them. It's expensive. <clears throat> I get it. Anyways, long story short, whenever you're doing any trades at all, whatever choice you make in the trade, you always need to let the trade play out. That's just like rule number one, I believe. Now, when I first started doing options and, and back and forth, back and forth, I was like, okay, well... Actually, not even, not even, because when I think back when I first started, I, in my mind, I always was like, whatever I put on, that's it. But then more people signed up for the letter, more people signed up for the letter, and I felt that, like, not every trade was going immediately. And then I said to people, well, you can kill it with 50%. But to be honest with you, I really wasn't doing that. And it has become very evident to me that really the people shouldn't do that. But the fact is that, like, I had a conversation with a person yesterday that made me realize that it's something that this is a, this is a classic, classic, classic problem for traders from since the beginning of time until now. And this guy has not done the class. He's on the newsletter. He just signed up. When you take a trade, you want to make a lot of money, and everybody does. Now, how are you going to take a trade and make a lot of money? Well, even if the trade works, the only way that you're going to make a lot of money is what? Well, there's two ways you can make a lot of money in a trade. What's the two ways you can make a lot of money in a trade? Somebody tell me. <coughs> there's two ways you can make a lot of money in a trade. How? Come on, I'm not doing this lecture for myself. I'm trying to I'm trying to give some information here since we're sitting here, but it's actually only me and Shower Singer. Risk a lot or what else? Size, risk a lot, and what else? Carl got it. Quick fall if you're in a short or rise if you're in a long. Not, well, not necessarily, not quick. Big. Big. Big, 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 big. Well, Brent's saying short stops, but that's the same idea of taking size. It's the same idea with the sizeness. You just size up. So if some, it's a 10 cent stop. You still have to take size to get make a lot. Anyways, the, the, the size of the move, size of your position size and size of the move in the stock. Like for example, again, no one here did this because I wasn't here and didn't call it. The option worked in Facebook Monday. But let's just, I mean, let's just, let's just for show, for shits and giggles here. If we had known at 9.30, or whatever time I called this trade, let me go back, what was Monday? We didn't know that stock was going to go like that that day where that entry. We couldn't have gotten a better entry in this if we tried. No one did besides us. We got the best entry of any trader out there alive on Monday. It's a great call. But we got out like we do normally. And let's just say, let's say you shorted this at 173. And I'm just throwing numbers out there just to give, make it easy for myself to give a point. Say you shorted it at 173.50 and you put the stop at 175.50. I don't think those were the exact numbers. I don't even remember anymore. I have to go back and look. But anyways, just pretend that you did a $2 stop in this. Pretend you did a $2 stop in this and you took 100 shares, which you would have risked what? $200. $200 you would have risked. Now just work with me here, which is a low, small amount of size. Hold on. Okay, this is fine. Say you did that and you could look into an hourglass and see on that on the day, I knew this was going to drop for the option, but say you could look into the hourglass and look and see on the day this is going to go. Let's just choose the low of the day. 
let's say 161. Say you knew it was going to go to 161. 173.50 minus 161 is twelve dollars and fifty cents times 100 shares. You could have made 1,250 bucks by risking 200 dollars. So in that case, it was small size, big stop. The stop wasn't small, small size, but the move that the stock had was very, very big, huge. Now let's say you were willing to risk $2,000 and you had 1,000 shares of it. You would have made what? $12,500, risking two grand. That's a lot of money in a day trade. I'm talking about a day trade, not an option. A day trade, that's a crap load of money for a day trade. And you would have had that profit by 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., within 30 minutes. Now, you would have had to risk $2,000, which certainly is a lot to risk in a day trade. So the reality is that everyone wants to make a lot of money, but... The only way you make a lot of money is if you have a big move or big size. So we're all clear on that. And Facebook is a good example because you could have made a lot of money doing that, holding it down with the big move, whether you took small size or big size. But even a, even a you know, Mr. Smith, if he was sitting over here, if he had done that trade and took that out and got out of the low with a $200 risk, he would have been wishing Wishing after the trade, even though he would have been thrilled that he made $1,250, he would have been wishing that he had taken more. He would have been wishing so badly that he had, and the next trade that, that would be called, he would decide to take more because he would say, well, I've got to take more here because I can take more. I can risk more than $200 in my account. I want to take more. I want to make the big bucks. I could have made $12,500 and instead of being happy about the $1,250 that he made, he is like thinking about the, the other money that he didn't make. Are you going with me here with this thought process? Is everybody with me? Hello, is anyone alive? So Mr. Smith takes the next trade and he risks $2,000. He has the $2,000 in his account to actually take the trade and he can take the size of it, whatever it is, pretend it was a small, small, cheap stock, whatever, like yesterday's, and he does it. Now remember, he booked $1,250 in the previous trade in the previous day. The next day, he decides to risk $2,000, wanting the big bucks, wanting the big money. Guess what? That trade doesn't work. That trade fails. Like Baidu, it stopped out. Then within one phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal trade, and just one normal stop, which happens because not every trade works. No matter on the options letter of the day trades, not every trade works. And then the second trade, and all of a sudden now he's down $750 for the week. Pretend it's Tuesday. Monday was the one, Tuesday was the other one. And he and he and he and he loses. And now he is down $750. He has a small account. Pretend he has five grand in a prop account. And he actually had increased that 5,000 to 6,250. And now all of a sudden, he's got 4,250 left in his account. Not only does he not have the profit from the previous day's great trade, now he's actually down in his actual cash to open the account since he started on Monday. Are you with me so far? Now, when you say, well, what's the win ratio? It's 50-50. Well, 50-50 isn't bad. 50-50 can still be profitable, but not if your size is off. And actually, if you have a high win ratio system, you're still going to lose money if your sizing is off, if your sizing is not correct. Because inevitably, this trade that you do something different in with size will be the one that loses. It's always the case. So then when you talk to Mr. Smith, he said, Mr. Smith, why did you do that? Because I want to make the big money. Because that trade before works so well, and I see your system works, Melissa, and I want to make the big money. Yes, I understand that, but you can't take different risks with different trades. So it doesn't matter how good the system is, you can't do that. And it doesn't matter even if you can afford to do that. Because the fact is that even if you can afford to do it mentally, emotionally, physically, 
and financially as well, it will chip away at you and most people, so it's not good to do. It is not good to take more risk than you're comfortable with. Now, somebody else, Mr. Bob Billy Joe, may be fine risking $2,000 in every trade and perfectly fine with that, perfectly, perfectly fine with it, whether they work or lose. But Mr. Smith was not, clearly, and then, you know, went off the rails. But he made a big mistake and he shouldn't have done it. But he really wanted to make the big bucks. So then the next trade, guess what? He risked $200. He makes a normal trade and makes, what, $200. His account still now is not back even to his original cash. Now he's got $44.50 in the account, minus commissions, whatever. He started out with five. He did three trades. Two worked, one lost, and he still doesn't have the, his original cash. So do you see where I'm going with this, how traders think? And how it is so then they then they never go back to what they never get to the point where they're they want to risk more or can risk more or do risk more because they're never comfortable with it because they just really can't and it's nothing about being able to afford it you could have five hundred thousand dollars in a, in a retail account but the fact is if you're not okay with taking a two thousand dollar loss you shouldn't risk two thousand dollars if you feel the need to kill a trade that you just put on and now I am going to talk about the options. If you take a trade in an option trade and it doesn't go right a ways and you feel the need that you want to kill it because it's down 50 cents and you paid four bucks or maybe it's down a dollar and you paid four bucks and it's only worth three and you paid four and you risk two grand and you're down a buck in that and you can't, you, you like, you like freaking out because it didn't go right a ways like Facebook, then you risk too much. I don't care if you have $20 million in a retail account. You risk too much if you freak out that you can't let the trades play out to even go on to work. Now, this isn't about taking a trade that's up and missing the exit. This is about just taking the trade, putting it on. It didn't even go yet. It didn't even work. It's down and it hasn't gone yet. It has two things that it can do. Either one, it's going to work or two, it's going to lose. But either way, getting back to what I was saying before about putting stop losses on trades, I just don't think it's a good idea for people to do it. But if people want to be conservative because they insist on taking big sides for the one, one in however many Facebooks work because they want that big move, the $12,500 trade, then the fact is that they have to be, and if they want to cut the trades off that are starting out down, then they're going to, they're probably, I don't know what the results would be, but my guess is that, that it's not going to be a good idea. Because the fact is that they'll get the big wins, but then when many, many trades work, they will be out of them and have suffered losses in trades that not only were not losses, were wins. It's the same thing with day trading when some of people kill trades or don't put stops in. Now, I've found that the people that don't use stops or, are, 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 or have a problem with stops really don't end up doing well. Now, something like Baidu, this wasn't like, woo, you know, it just went like, and this is going to go, you piece of crap. Look at this. I'm not doing this again, but this is absolutely a piece of crap. But the option's going to work. So revenge trade the option, but the day trade I'm not going to do again. Anyways, um, something like Baidu, that just that didn't go shoo like that. But sometimes that can happen, and you get stopped out, and it just goes shoo like that. And it's like, woo, thank God I got out of that. And even if you get like a cushion out of wherever you wanted to get filled, it's like if you didn't get out, it's like, whoa. Oh, you, you know, you could have lost another $3. Now, that Baidu was not like that. But the fact is like that there are times when those things happen. And if you don't put a stop in at all, a real stop, then you can get hurt. And you don't even, this isn't even about taking big size. This is just about the fact that you didn't put the stop in. I'm describing you before you fix your sizing. Yes. But I think, I think it's positive that you're doing trades on your own, Brent. I think that's very positive. Like, I didn't like this, but you did it. You made money. I think that's positive. Um, actually, did you get out of this here now? I hope you are, because it did break nine. You just got a gift here, 892. I hope you were out of this, Brent. But anyways, I'm, I'm giving you a, 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 a kudos for doing trades on your own, even if I don't like them. But I'm saying you're, you wanting to do trade after trade after trade after trade, I think, is problematic. And the reason you do is because maybe your size isn't what you want it to be. But doing five trades isn't a good idea, or three trades, or two trades. Like if you did this trade and you made money, be, be happy. I think it's good that you're doing things on your own. I think that's fine. You're going with your own conviction, and that's all healthy and positive. But I don't think it's a good idea to trade, 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 trade. And very often lately in the last month and a half, 
you, you do a trade, you make money, you want to do another trade, another trade, another trade. And, you know, unless you do the one trade and it's three R's, and if the second trade fails, you're still up two R's, then every time you do a second trade, and this is my philosophy too, if you do a second trade and the first trade works and you have your goal for the day or something, anything, good money, decent, whatever. Like if you take a risk with two grand and you make a thousand bucks, that's a thousand bucks. Like that's good. If you risk a thousand and you make five hundred dollars, it's five hundred dollars, you know. So I mean, I think that that's fine. But if you risk and you take a trade and you take one trade and it works, and if you risk a thousand dollars and you make a thousand dollars, if you take a second trade and risk a thousand dollars and the trade second trade doesn't work, guess what? You didn't make any money and you just gave back a thousand dollars. So that to me is why I say do it, stop, boom, boom, boom. And if we're doing more than one, it's probably because we stopped in the first one. Where did this go? By the way, 63. You're arguing about then about that now. You have $24 in the Apple option. I think you mean Disney. Are you talking about Apple or Disney? I don't know what you're talking about. You, okay, you wanted to hold the trade and he wanted you to get out for 24 bucks. Well, how much was your risk exactly? How much did you risk in the Disney and what did you spend and I know you're up $24. Actually, you were up more probably into the open this morning because it's gapped up. And my guess is you paid about three something. Okay, you paid four. So you paid, you spent $400 and you have $24. See, I wouldn't get out for that. I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get out for that. <coughs> Besides, this looks good. It looks good. So why did Ben want you to get out? Oh, this market's so tricky. It's a tricky risk. Tricky, ridiculous dog. He says green is green. I know, that's a philosophy, but you do have to give trades a chance to work. And if you want to look at it, that trade isn't even up 10%. That trade was up 5%. 5%. I think that's like... It's like, do you know what I'm saying? He wants to get out with a 5% profit and a good trade. I don't, I, I, that's, I don't think that, I don't, I think that's too small. Anyways, getting back to the story, I'm trying to finish here with you with a story about size. Um, gosh, I lost my train of thought. And then I gotta go because I need another cup of coffee because this day's getting late here. Um, here, you could, gosh, should we do more of this here? I don't have very long, move aside. Thirty-five by ninety. Thirty-five by ninety. Thirty-five by ninety. You can take more. In fact, just put an order out. 1735 you can take more of this if you want and put this stuff at 1790 and that should hold and quite frankly this really shouldn't back up that much by that here either put an order out if you want to do it or hit it when it does it now let me just double check this here i mean i guess we could theoretically put it over 18 just to be safe wait till the lower of the stop till 35 here it just hit it just hit okay let's do this Let's put it at 1810. 1810, stop, pull it down, and you could take it again, or you could take more of the AEO. Now that's gonna turn out to make this day pretty good. This goes. Let's just get everything here. All right, there you go. Here's the numbers if you wanted to do another trade. Let me just write these in the room. Here, you can still do this. Or you can do an ad. Target's the same. <sighs> okay, what was I saying? Anyways, the point is, though, that you can't have it both ways. So this new guy on the options letter was talking about this and talking about this yesterday. He was freaking out because the trade was down 90 cents. 90 cents in an option that cost $4.
you can't have it both ways. You cannot risk a lot, and then when it doesn't go right at ways, you can't then kill the trade. Same thing with the day trades. If you take a trade at 931 or 935 or 936, and the trade doesn't go right at ways, and you're down until 10 o'clock, you can't just kill the trade. The stop is in, and with the option, the amount you risk is the amount you risk. You can't have it both ways. You can't risk a lot of money in a trade, okay, and then if it doesn't go right away, you want to kill it or be nervous about it if it's down right away. And there, there was one student in here. I've emailed him a couple of times. He hasn't come back. He was notorious for not putting in stops and taking huge size. Like the one day I remember he put in the size he took. It was like twice the size that I took in the trade. And I thought, what the hell is this guy doing? And he wasn't brand new, but he was within six months. He... He just was trying to get a fast move in something, taking a giant mongo size and getting out. And that is absurd. You have to allow trades to work. Inevitably, we will get the Facebooks and we will get some Facebooks that we get more than the Facebook day trade that Monday. But again, that was just like, just fell out of the sky on a Monday. And it was still a good solid day, actually. It was a lot easier of a day than today was. And yesterday was nothing. So, you know, ultimately, you have to be consistent with what you're doing with your size. It's great to say you want to take a lot of size. But if you get nervous, if you can't stomach it, if you kill the trade when it's down right away, or you don't want to put a stop in or whatever, then you, you have, like, the answer is clear. Back it off. Back off your size. It has nothing to do, nothing to do with how much money you have whatsoever at all. Nothing. You'll never get to the point where you can actually grow your account if you have a small one, unless you're aware of that, so it's important. But even if you have a lot of money, it's going to create serious havoc in your mind if you really can't handle it. And this gentleman, I know can't handle it. And I told him 55 times, I don't know if he's going to listen to me. So we'll see. But it's clear to me it's like a disease with traders for that. They want it both ways. This just doesn't happen. It's not realistic. All right, what do you want to do? No, unless something says that something is wrong, but what would that what would that be? So I mean, unless something says, oh my God, something's wrong, and I can't even think of a trade like that to even say it. To be honest with you. So set the risk that you're okay with the risk on any trade you take. Once in a blue moon, we might kill a day trade that I say, ah, uh, and we kill it, but really not with the options. And, and, and it's just really the way that I've been calling them. Probably I'd say the last year, but seriously, definitely the last six months where they just full on flat on aren't working or they are full on working. So why not give it a chance? But I, you know, it's sometimes they don't work the exact day that I call them. And that's the point with him. Like he was freaking out yesterday because I called a trade and it was down slightly. It was literally within two hours. It's like, okay, you, this is, you know, silliness. But it really stemmed from, I called a really nice call in this. And I think it was a lot easier to capture the option trade and move in this than the day trade. Because if you, it just kept dropping, if you let it on, it just went. You know, with day trading, you have to be much more nimble than option trades. But day trading, the money comes much, much, much faster. And the nice thing about day trading, there's pros and cons to both, but the nice thing about day trading is you know exactly. You're never going to sleep at night at 4 o'clock when the market closes, not knowing what's going to happen the next day. Sometimes it works out in your favor, as many of the trades that I've called have, and then gap in the continued direction of the trade that I've called, and that's, what, that's what's been happening the last six weeks, which has been really good for the letter. I, you know, my eye has been very good lately. But with day trades, you can sleep at night because you know, well, I made $552, or I lost $552. You know, like, that's it. And so, you know, that's why you have to be okay with your risk. You never lose more than you pay for an option. That's correct. Now, you want to make sure that you exercise it before the expiration date if you're up or you'll end up, you'll end up, uh, if you like, if you bought a call, you'll end up buying it. But that would only be if you're up. 
Otherwise, if you were down, it will go bust. But there was a situation here that happened recently this year with what with, with happened with one of the traders, and she was then forced to buy it, and she had to come up with the money or had, had a margin call to come up with the money to buy it because she didn't get out of it, but it was up. That's not going to happen if you're down, though. So the only money you can ever lose in a day trade, in, a, in an option trade, is what you paid for it. In a day trade, really, you can lose as you could you could lose as much as you could possibly lose because between 9:30 and 4, those trades are on, and you must get out before 4, or then it turns into a swing trade, in which case your margin is two to one, and you have no idea where the stock's going to open the next day, and you may have a margin call just to stay in the position, or they take you out of it the next day, and you got to get out before 4. And also, something can move against you on the day in, an, in a direction against you. And if you don't have a stop in it, your losses could be unlimited. Now, many, many places have risk management, so they will, they will exit you out of a trade. But actually, if you're at a retail place, that really isn't the case. Even though they do have risk managers, <laughs> it's, not, it's not the same. Like, God, what can I even think? Like Qcom. Here, let's look at this QCOM. That day that this happened here, 416. Uh, crap, I'm not gonna be able to go back that far. Nope, I can't. I don't know when this happened, and I don't know the time, and I don't know the second, but I know this happened on the day, and this didn't happen in the gap move. I think this move happened at like two o'clock in the afternoon or 1.30 in the afternoon. I don't remember, I can't go back. So if anybody can go back in this chart, in the intraday chart, in a one minute or 15 minute, send it to me on this QCOM, on this day, because this is a good example. I'm just gonna go back here and get a look at this. Actually, no, we have to take this whole off for you to see it. If you were short QCOM before that move, and you had a short position in, say you were short as a day trade, and you're short position in QCOM on that day, the 16th, the stock wasn't a downtrend, and if you would have done anything that would have made sense, you would have been shorted, or you would have done nothing. But say, and I'm just making a pretend example, if you were short QCOM on that day on the 16th, the day that that news broke, uh, whatever, then if you didn't have a stop in, you lost your whole account. Like say you walked away, you went to a meeting, came back and didn't have a stop in, it was you were gone. Like you, you lost a million dollars. Like because the stock was literally like down in here and then it went up to 71. It was late in the day. I don't, I, don't, I don't have the chart to look at the time, but this is an example where you, if you didn't have a stop in it, if you were short it, and some people might have been shorted because the fact is that the stock was trending down, I definitely wouldn't have been long in here. I wouldn't have shorted this on the day because of the setup here on the day of the gap. But if you hadn't had a stop, you would have lost, you would have lost your whole account. Absolutely. And no one would have gotten you out of that in time to save you. I don't even think the risk managers at prop places would have. They would have, they would have killed you with your, your trades eventually. You would have just been out. But you know, I think that move happened so quickly, so unexpectedly on news that it, you, you, like nobody would have had time to get everybody out anyways, like to kill all positions. And then you would have been upside down. And that is what happens to people. And that is what happens to many people that blow through their accounts. It happens so often that you, you don't even know how often it happens. I'm only buying puts or calls for the options letter. So anything else? I don't even deal with anything else. So you'd have to talk to the broker about that, but I'm not calling those trades anyways. Um, all right, I'm gonna let everybody go. Shower Singer's in this with me. Looks good. Did anybody do the second train? In fact, this looks really good. <laughs>